afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Listen, hey, let me jump on here and see if we can do our uh, devotional. I want to apologize for those, apologize for those who uh, missed out on us this morning or I missed you this morning. It's busy um, with work and some other things to take care of. But, you know, if you jump on, great. If not, then, hey, we'll be here when you when you when you come out or you can replay it and watch it later. Amen. So uh, we'll give folk a few minutes to jump on and then we'll get right after it um, and um, share this with some folks, share this with some people, you know. Um, yeah, we're still dealing with family sin patterns. Amen. Share it with some folk if you can today, um, but we'll give folk a few minutes to jump on and we'll go after it. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful to see you all and have you all jump on with us. I don't expect for us to get a lot of numbers today because I'm late. I was supposed to be on at 11. Couldn't I get on? I was not in a position to leave a message for folk um, to let them know. Good morning. Good afternoon, Tim. A good evening, um, but please be uh, be advised. We'll be back um, again on Friday, but we'll be on time Friday. Amen. Hello, all. Hey, brother Stark, how you doing? It's good to see you, sir. Amen. We're still dealing with family sin patterns. Hey, share this with somebody. Tag somebody. Let them know we all doing what we got to do. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We'll get fucked by another three minutes. We'll get started. And it uh, won't be long. Hope you enjoyed Bible study last night. Um, it was good. I enjoyed teaching it. Um, I enjoyed being with you all and being in your presence. And um, I pray and hope that uh, things will continue to evolve and continue to get better. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he is doing. Amen. Amen. About, about two minutes and we'll get started. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Tim, how you doing, man? Good, man. Thank you for jumping on, man, in the afternoon. Uh, it's a blessing to see you, man. Thank you so much. I pray that all is going well with you. Um, we're dealing with this self-care situation here, uh, trying to get our people, uh, trying to get people healthy. Amen. That's the key. Got to get folk healthy. Um, if we can get healthy within ourselves, uh, great man, be safe driving, brother. The weather's beautiful here. I hope it is beautiful there, um, down in Maryland there. But um, here's the key. If we can get healthy within ourselves, then we can be healthy in our dealings and relationships with others. Amen. That is uh, that is absolutely key for us to uh, get healthy. Amen. And that's what we're aiming to do um, here with what we have. We're going to get healthy. Amen. That is my that is my number one goal for us is to be healthy. All right. Good afternoon, Sister Robson. Amen. Got about another minute. We're going to uh, jump on. Get your book. I hope you picked it up. It's Soul Care. It's written by Dr. Rob Reimer. Uh, Rob Reimer. Or Reimer. Reimer. Um, one of my professors in my doctoral program. The book is called Soul Care. It's an incredible book. It is one that you, um, you, you, you want to get. It's a must read. Soul Care. That's the book right there. Pick it up, man, if you can. It's an awesome book. This is what we're studying and working our way through. So if we can afford to get healthy, um, we can now, we're healthy within ourselves, then we can be healthy and um, capable and able to help others. But when we're unhealthy and we're trying to help someone else who's unhealthy, now we become enablers. Um, they become our enabler and we become their enabler. And... Um, it is not something that we need because now you got two sick people together and nothing, nothing well and good can come from that. Amen. So let's pray briefly and do what we got to do. I won't be long before you. 
Uh, Father God, we thank you for today. God has been a um, busy day, a very um, hectic day for most of us, God, and we we thank God for it. It's, this day is starting for some and it's ending for others. God, either way, we thank you for it. We, uh, we count it all joy to just be alive and to observe and view your handiwork. God, I pray for our time together today that you will teach us and instruct us, God, but most of all, God, fill us. Help us to figure out what it is that we need to work on in our life, God, so that we can be better. Bless those who may be here. Bless those who are going to view later. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Listen, in this book, uh, we're reading um, Soul Care. We're, we're in principle number three. We're dealing with family sin patterns, okay? Family sin patterns. Uh, those that you, we've been talking about, things that um, have happened in each of our families or all of our families that we we find ourselves repeating or we find that these things manifest themselves in our family in one way or another. Don't believe or don't think that you are uh, immune or you are uh, inoculated from family sin patterns. If you have family, you have some unconfessed and you have some family secrets. Dr. Rama says this, he says, once you die, you do not have the rights to the family secrets anymore. In other words, people have died and carried family secrets to the grave that other people know about, and they still don't talk about it. Well, he says, listen, you don't have rights to it once you die. And for us to be healthy and for us to be who we need to be, we really need to explore our family secrets. Okay? I know it's difficult for some of us to do a cat and do, but listen, let me tell you something. You need to look through and find and deal with your family secrets. Amen? It's imperative that we do. All right? Trust me. If you can deal with your family secrets, you're going to be fine. Amen? Here it is. He says on page 105, he says, one of the reasons for overcoming fam family sin patterns, he says, one of the reasons is simply because they have been modeled, the family sin patterns have been modeled for us, and they were modeled for our parents before us and their parents before them. In other words, he's saying that family sin patterns are deeply generational. Do you hear me? They're deeply generational. And we have to dig into our family to understand where they come from. Because if we don't get to the root of our, our problems, we will always treat the symptom. All right? Oftentimes, we spend way more time treating the symptoms to a problem than we do actually uh, getting to the root. And the root of our family sin patterns or our family sins or some of the things that manifest in us are deeply rooted in our family history. Do you get that? Alcoholism in some of our families just didn't start. Alcoholism, if we go back and look in our family, we will find where it started. Or we will find that we had people in our family who uh, consumed alcohol and were, were alcoholics. You can find that in your family. And here's the key. You find that this person was an alcoholic, but now you got to figure out why. Here comes the hard work. You got to dig into it and find out why. What caused this person to drink? They didn't just wake up one morning and say, you know what? Um, I think I want to become a drunk. No, there is some trauma, some event, some scandal, something happened that triggered that. And the way they have been coping with it or tried to cope with it was drink. You got to find out what that is, because if you can figure that out, now you can take away the shame and the stigma of the family sin. You can talk about it and it takes away the enemy's power to hold you prisoner with the family sin. Are you tracking me today? Here's 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 a couple of things. And I, and I told you, I'm not going to be long today. Um, here's a couple of things I want us to to to, to begin to, to look at. All right. Here it is. You 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 got to You got to. What are the sin, what are the family sins or what are the sin patterns in your family? It says you may want to take time to do a genogram. It said this family, this is a family tree designed to look back into our history to see where we come from, but also to see what came along with it. 
we, we like to find out our history and find out where we're from. But in finding out where we're from, there are some things that came along with that that's manifesting itself in our lives today. And here's something I want you to understand. Things don't always manifest themselves the same way it happened in the past. You may have had an abusive grandfather, an abusive father, or abusive great-grandfather. And your abuse, you're not abusive, but you could be angry. You could be quick-tempered. You could be volatile. You, 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 so, so, so you say, why am I volatile? Why am I angry? Well, you got to go back and find out where it came from. Are you following me? You tracking me? So, so, so we have to do, let's look at David and Solomon. David was a womanizer and Solomon became an even greater womanizer after his father. Where did it come from? That came from his father. And if we don't deal with family sin, if we don't deal with sin severely, sin will severely deal with us. If we don't kill it at the root, we don't find the root and kill it, you will, it will escalate. Let me, let me give you an example. If you pull up weeds out of your yard and you don't pull the root of the weed up, the root, the weed, the weed gets bigger and it spreads more. You, you pull up the top, you say, I got it. But then you go back out there and the weed is multiplied. You know why? Because you did not get the root of it. And what were you doing? You were treating the symptom. What's the symptom? You popped the top off. You brushed it off. You took the top off to hide it, which makes it seem as if it's all taken care of, but it has not been. Are you tracking me? Okay. Here it is. You got to get to the root. Okay. Here's another question. How does those family sin patterns manifest themselves in your life? Be honest. Figure out how they manifest themselves. We will call something, we will give something a wonderful name so it becomes palatable let's 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 for instance lust we say well i'm attracted to uh successful women or i'm attracted to successful men what is the root of that lust but we'll call it something so it won't sound bad when we talk about it and it's palatable to those who are listening if you're tracking me, help me understand this, okay? So we got to be honest. How have it? How has the family sin patterns manifested themselves in your own life? And the only way you're going to find that out is you got to go back and look at your family history. Here's the last thing, and I'm done for the day. What actions, good afternoon, Anya, what actions do you need to take to overcome them? Each of us have something we struggle with, we're fighting with. What actions do we need to take to overcome them? And I always say, you've got to get somebody you can confess with, a good confessional partner that y'all can do full confessions together, where y'all can talk to each other and you don't, you don't abuse each other. You can talk to each other. You don't judge each other. And you pray with each other and you help each other through. Some stuff you say, well, we could just pray. You know, we pray it out. We pray it out. And we're going to cast it out. But some stuff you got to walk out. Not everything can be cast out. Some things you have to walk out. Some things take time. Some things take other people holding you accountable to help you get through what you need to get through. Here it is. He says this. He says, what spiritual discipline would be most important to you? What scriptures do you need to meditate on? Find you a spiritual discipline. Devotional. Have a great devotional life. Do you journal? I would suggest that you journal, write this stuff down, write it down as it manifests itself. And as you figure out these different patterns, write them down, journal, meditate, devotional. You got to develop your own spiritual formation. Okay. Praying is important. It's important that you have a good spiritual praying partner, but don't get someone who's going to pray with you and give you uh, unrealistic expectations. Get you somebody who is going to walk through this thing with you so that you can understand where you come from, so that you can deal with that which you uncover, so that you can be healthy going into the future. If we continue to go into relationships and enter into partnerships with other people,
and we are unhealthy, we're only going to destroy that person and ultimately destroy us. The key is not to destroy. The key is to build. And the way you build, you must be healthy. If you're tracking me, I hope I helped you today. I know it's quick. It's, it's down. We're going into chapter four uh, next in, in the book. I hope you're reading your book in chapter four. We're going to start talking about some other stuff in chapter four. Let me tell you what it is. We're going to talk about the big F word. We're going to talk about the F word in chapter four. And that F word is forgiveness. We're going to talk about forgiveness in chapter four of this book. You have to learn to forgive. And we're going to try to look and see what forgiveness looks like. Because there are a lot of people who say, I've forgiven, but I ain't going to forget. I've forgiven, but I, I'm just not going to do. Uh -uh. Let's look and see what true forgiveness looks like based upon the word of God and based upon what we find. I challenge you over the next day or so, the next month, next year, start digging into your family past. I did it. I've gone into both my father's family and my mother's family. And man, did I find some things that was absolutely mind blowing, but it was also liberating and helpful to me so that I could understand my own personality and understand why I do and react and why I say and move the way I move. It has helped me tremendously to combat the family and combat my own sins and combat the, my own demons that I have because now I understand the root, where the root is. And I didn't just treat the symptom. I didn't pop the top off the weed. We went all the way back in the family and dealt with that. We dealt with the root of it. The moment you deal with the root, of the family sin pattern, then you will start to see an improvement in your life. Because here's what the devil wants to do. If he can shame you, he can always keep you locked in your prison. Because if you're shameful of the sin, you'll never talk about it. And if you don't ever talk about it, you'll never get liberated from it. You got to talk about it. All right. Listen, next time we get together to be Friday, it'll be at 11. If you're able, jump on. If you can't, uh, the videos will be up. You can grab it, share it, look at it. But get the book, Soul Care. Incredible book. Um, incredible, challenging, uh, thought-provoking steps that you must walk through uh, to do. This is my third time going through the book myself. And each time I go through the book, I find something new and I get a little bit better. So until we meet again, on uh, Friday at 11, you be blessed. May heaven smile upon you.